In this lecture, let's have a quick overview of what is JSX and how do we use it in a React application. Here in this app.js or you can say in this app component, we are returning some markup. And if you remember, this markup is called as JSX or JavaScript XML. Usually, we cannot write HTML inside a JavaScript file. If we want to write some HTML in a JavaScript code, we usually wrap it within quotes. That means we write HTML as a string in a JavaScript file. But here, we are able to write some HTML without wrapping it within quotes. That means without writing it as a string. That's because, again, this markup which you see here is not HTML. It is JSX. Now, when we will run this JavaScript file in the browser, browsers do not understand JSX. So, this JSX syntax first needs to be transformed into a regular JavaScript code. So, there should be some transformation steps involved before rendering this JSX code in the browser. And indeed, there is one transformation step involved here. Basically, when this JavaScript code will be compiled, the JSX code will be transformed into regular JavaScript. And we have seen that in one of the previous lectures of this course. So a compiler like Babel, which is a modern JavaScript compiler, takes the responsibility of converting JSX into plain JavaScript before the JavaScript file is rendered in the browser. Now, the question here is, why do we need JSX? Why don't we use regular JavaScript instead? It will also omit the extra step of converting JSX into regular JavaScript, right? Well, we can certainly use regular JavaScript instead of JSX. Let's in fact use JavaScript instead of JSX here. So here we are returning a paragraph element and we have created this paragraph element using JSX syntax. Now instead of returning this paragraph element which we have created using JSX, let's go ahead and let's create a paragraph element using simple JavaScript. To create an element in JavaScript, we use document.createElement method. And to this create element method, we can pass the element which we want to create. So here, we want to create a paragraph element. So we can pass P. Now, this create element method is going to return that element. So let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable. And let's call this variable P. So here, we have created a paragraph element. Now, currently, this paragraph element is empty. So what we want is, we also want to have some text in between opening and closing paragraph element. For that, on this P variable, we can use text content property and we can set some text content for this paragraph element. So here, let's say this is a demo paragraph. Now let's go ahead and let's return this paragraph. All right. Now we want to use this paragraph in index.js file. For that, we need to import this app this app function in this index.js and we are already doing it here now we also want to display that paragraph in this div which we have in the index.html file so here we have a div with this id root so we want to display this paragraph element which we have just created inside this div so let's go to index.js let me comment these two lines here and Let's go ahead and let's get access to this div with this id root. For that, let's say document dot get element by id. And to this, let's pass the id as root. Okay, so it will return that div element. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's call it div. And then on this div variable, let's call append method. And here we want to append the paragraph which this app function is returning. Okay, and this app function is stored inside this app. So to this, let's pass this app. Now here we are simply passing the function, but this paragraph element will be returned only when this function will be called. So here we also need to call this function which is stored in this app. And to call that function, we can use a set of parentheses after that name. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And let me refresh the page here. And here you can see it is displaying that paragraph. This is a demo paragraph. So basically, it is displaying 
this paragraph this content so it is also possible to use regular javascript to design the ui but if you notice here when we are using the regular javascript earlier when we were using this jsx syntax there we had only one line of code but now we have three lines of code this code might get more complex when we add more and more elements in the ui using javascript so jsx gives us this advantage of creating ui elements with ease using html syntax and that's why instead of using plain javascript we use jsx to design our ui okay let's also go ahead and let's remove this code or i will keep this code for your reference and let's uncomment this code all right now when we are using jsx we can also write expressions within this html so for example after this text let's say i want to add two numbers so i want to perform an arithmetic operation let's say 10 plus 5 so in the result in the browser you will see the result of this arithmetic expression let's see that let's go to the web page and if i refresh the page you can see that after this text we also have this result the result of the sum of these two numbers so using these curly braces you can also write some javascript expression here so let's take another example let me remove these curly braces from here let's go ahead and let's create a variable let's call it maybe message and to this let's assign a string maybe awesome and now i want to use this variable within this text so here let's say i want to say this is my first and then i want to display the value of this message variable so now if we go to the web page you will see that we have this text this is my first awesome component so here the value of the message variable has been rendered now from this function from this app component we are returning a single element this paragraph element now what if we want to return more than one element so for example i also want to return an h1 element here let's say this is my header okay so now we are trying to return two html elements one is this h1 element and another is this paragraph element and you will notice that here we have a red squiggly showing that here we have an error that's because when we want to return more than one html element in that case those html elements must be wrapped within one top level element so to resolve this issue what we can do is we can wrap these two html elements within a container element that container element can be a div or a span or anything okay so here let's go ahead and let's use a div as a container element let me cut this closing div from here and let's paste it here and you will notice that that error is gone so let's save the changes and let's go to the web page so here you will notice that now an h1 element and a paragraph element is being displayed now here this markup is not that much readable so what we want is we want to move it to separate lines so that it will be more readable something like this okay now let's save the changes and let's go to the web page so let me refresh the page and we are still seeing this header and this paragraph so it is working as expected but it's a good practice that when you have more than one line of html which you are returning from a component then you must wrap it within parenthesis like this and it should still be working so we still don't have any error and we can see that h1 element and the paragraph element one more very important thing which you need to remember is that jsx is simply an xml okay so jsx follows xml rules and therefore every html element must be properly closed now in html we have some elements which are self-closing for example the 
image tag or the input element these are self closing right but here if you use it like that so for example let's say i'm using an input element here say type is text so in html we don't need to provide a closing input tag but when you are writing jsx in that case the closing input tag is mandatory if you remove this you will get an error as you can see here so remember that in jsx every html element must be closed so here when i'm providing the closing input element here you can see that error is gone if i save the changes and if we go to the web page now we should also have an input element here so this is a very high level overview of what jsx is and how we can use it in a react application you will learn more about jsx as we go along through this course